So this is uh, unit standard 25705. It's task number three. It's a truncated cone with an inclined base of 26 degrees. Radial line pattern development. And we're going to draw it at a scale of 1 to 2 to ensure that it fits on the sheet because uh, it's going to be quite large when it lays out. So front page has a top diameter of 100 millimeters OD, base diameter of 400 millimeters OD, vertical height of 3 mm, uh, 300 millimeters high. It's made out of 2 millimeter galvanized sheet. So we can buy 2 millimeter galv sheet off the shelf. Uh, because it's 2 mil, we will just have a butt weld joint. It won't be lapped or anything. It's a bit too thick. You could spot weld it, but um, you could have a pretty high powered unit to go through 4 mil. So over here on the left hand side, draw orthographic views at a scale of 1 to 2 to ensure your pattern fits on an A3 sheet of paper. So that's how I'm going to draw it inside a, a, a um, window that is 421 by 297. So the top mean diameter is 100 millimetres. We have to, um, 100 millimetres OD, we minus the 2 millimetres material thickness, which gives us 98 uh, millimetres diameter. We, we divide that by 2 which is our scaling, we have a top diameter of 49 millimetres. The bottom mean diameter is 400 millimetres overall, uh, OD, minus the 2 millimetres material thickness. Gives us 398 millimetres diameter, divided by 2 is 199 millimetres. The vertical height is uh, 300 millimetres. We will simply divide that by 2 for the scale again, and we'll have it 150 mil high. I've got some uh, other things in here, large radius, called length arc angle, and I will show you how to do those as well. So stepping into uh, the window that is exactly the size of a A4 sheet of paper. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come up 20 millimetres. And the vertical height from there is 100, uh, 150 millimetres. So 150 for another offset. There's my vertical height. We want to be 49 millimetres in diameter at the top. So half of that is 24 4.5 so 0.5 so we step off either side 24.5 clear that the base is 199 millimeters so that will step off either side 99.5 so stepping off that size either side at the bottom we then draw our lines in for our cone to that point there back down to here so I can get rid of those for a start. And I'm going to trim out down my outside of my cone. So get rid of that, 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 and that. We need a line coming up from the base. Well, I'm just going to type in 300 mils at an angle of 154. So there's our angle. Uh, trim that off. Trimming that off. Uh, just to show you the angle is correct, dim angle, we have 26 degrees in here, there's our 26 which is supposed to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break that line there, pick that, type in F, click on there twice. So the two, two outside lines are going to be on projection lines at the bottom because they're not actually part of the drawing. And then we want to project the top, so I'm going to extend it up to the centre line to that to our apex. Our top point is our apex, and I'm going to break those two lines as well. Click on that. F one two. Same on the other side. That one there, hit F. So these two lines will be just projection lines up to the apex as well. And that's our basic outline of our cone. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, we want a plan view. Well, we can draw the plan at the base. I haven't got enough space between the uh, top of the sheet and our apex. So normally we draw our circle on the bottom. Well, we'll draw the circle anyway. So you can see it goes off the sheet. So I'm going to have it on the inside. So I'm going to trim it off across the base, which is fine. Nothing wrong with that. That's going to be, and we'll leave it like that in, in the first instance. Put 
put that on a dimension. Uh, and we need to break this into six equal pa uh, places, so we just use our circle again. You can use your dividers, swinging it from this corner to the center line, swinging it back out the other side as well. And then I need to go from where the circle cuts the center line, I need to come back to the base and draw that. And then for me, if you've watched these videos, you'll see how I do them. I just draw small circles. You would just be putting a small arc with your dividers on these, on the uh, semicircle, but AutoCAD is a bit cumbersome for that, so I don't bother. And then I will trim those out just by hitting those. Getting rid of that, getting rid of that, that side, that side, and then I just take out my circles very quickly. So I got my six points. Now I draw lines vertically to the base from those. So straight down to the bottom. Each one. We need them on all sides in this particular drawing. And what I'll do is I'll turn those into projection lines as well. I'll now get rid of the small white marks. The less lines I have on here, the better. So I get rid of those. Uh, from that position, we draw our lines to the apex. So where it hits, where these lines have been projected down to the baseline, we take a line all the way to the apex. I should have done that straight back down to there. And then this one here again up to the apex and back down to the next one. So we get a series of points where these lines here are coming down and they're hitting this line here. We get a series of points and we need those points to develop our pattern. So what I'll do is I will turn those into projection lines because that's all they are. But what I want to do from that position is I want to draw horizontal lines where the line is coming down and it hits the line. I go straight across to the outside. Take the next one straight across. Center line straight across to the outside. Straight across. I will zoom in on that one slightly. Yep. And the last one straight across. Uh, the bottom point is already a fixed point. This one on the outside here, this blue line, you can project it to the other side, but it's already a true length. So you can leave that true length on that side. This is the true length of the longer side. By what we're doing, by taking these lines across, we're creating the true lengths for these points. We project them all to this outside edge here, and that's where we take our dimensions from. So what I'm going to do for a start is I'm going to number everything. So I've gone and uh, numbered my points around the uh, semicircle. The outside leg uh, on the left hand side is going to be zero. We're going to make this line on this side here, this line here, the joint line. It's the shortest length to weld up. So we'll make that the uh, joint line. So that is actually on line zero. Uh, next is one, two, three, four, five, six. If you continued the circle, uh, one side of the pattern is exactly the same as the half, so it would be 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, back to, around to 0 on this side. So that's what it looks like uh, in front elevation or side elevation with our plan of this you know, portion of the circle here to work out our rollout length. Uh, that's what that is there, that's the plan. So that's what we need. I am actually going to project that line across this one here. Uh, scroll here. Yep. I'm going to project that to that side. I wasn't going to do that, but I just had a th thought about that. So what we need is these links down this outside edge here for each of these intersection points down here. They are what we are going to use to scribe our arc. So these, in actual fact, once again, are projection lines. And so what we'll do now is we will start to develop our pattern. 
because we've got enough, enough information here to start developing the pattern. Now it's really crucial that when you come to mark out your pattern that you set your sheet up how I've got it here otherwise it will not fit on the sheet. It'll just give you grief. So what I'll give you the dimensions from the base of the paper up on this side and from this side here. So coming in on this side you could make this 230 millimeters. I've shown it it's exactly at 229.5. You can make it 230 and this dimension coming up from the bottom or you can either make it 232 or uh, 233 whatever you want just to get you this intersection point because you're gonna have to excuse me uh, lay the pattern out. So what we want is this length all the way down this outside edge here from the apex right to the very base this is what we're going to scribe our arc with so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a distance on it uh, and from there down to there you can see that it's 222.49 I would suggest you draw it at 222 or 223 your call on that you're not going to be able or you might be able to set your dividers to 22.5 give it your best shot so I need to draw a radius at 222.49 so up here the circle uh, is going to be 222.49 so you can see it runs off the sheet normally we would um, draw it around this position here uh, from the apex to the base that's how we would draw it. it cuts back in on this other side at point zero but it's not going to fit on the paper so this is why I'm doing it on the, another sheet of paper to show you how we can get it on the sheet from there what I want you to do is to come down from 10 millimeters from the top edge of your sheet and put a starting point and from there you will need to draw a line in from that point there to that point there that's going to be your uh, start position for doing your pattern. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim out the bulk of the material that's not required from that point to that point there. Get rid of that and I'm going to take that line out. The less lines I've got on the sheet the better for you to understand. So um, what we need to do is step off our distances all the way around this outside line here and those distances come from sorry line uh, come on line they come from this dimension here 0 to 1 which is exactly the same as 1 to 2 so that dimension there what was it uh, I'll do a dim a line so going from that position there to that position there shows 51.5 millimeters. Actually, this line here that I've put in is not in the correct position. So going from one to two, you can see it's exactly the same, 51.5. So what you can do is set your compass or your dividers and draw your circles around here at 51.5. Um, so I'm just going to step them off once again I have to do a full circle you don't have to do that you can just draw in a small arc how many have we got we're getting close to the end it goes almost all the way on this sheet so uh, intersection points, well I can draw the lines in. So they've got to come from the apex, you need to draw them all. So it's hitting that point there, that point there to the apex and back out to the next one. laying these all in scroll in a bit more and it should give me 
Uh, 12 spaces, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 lines, 12 spaces. You can take your, you won't have these big circles, as I've said repeatedly, you're probably sick of me saying it, but you can, um, I need to take them out. So that's how the pattern lays into the sheet. Now, what I need to do, I'm just going to check this because uh, to get it right. So what I need is the base diameter I said to you was uh, half of 99, 199. So 199 divided by 2 is 95.5. And I had to divide that by my long radius down the outside edge here. Those two lengths there add up to 222.49. So divide by 99.5, divide that by 222.49, and then I times that by 360 degrees, and that gives me an arc angle. Uh, get out of there. What's that? An arc angle here of 160.99 uh, degrees. So 0, 0176. Uh, my large radius was 222.49. And I can work out my chord length. So if I do, if I use my formula down here, and if I write it in below, so I've got here 2 times 222.49. Uh, times sine open bracket one six zero point nine nine zero two four seven two and close and that tells me I have a chord length would be four hundred and thirty eight point eight seven millimeters so that's one way of checking it so if I come over here and I draw in a line, or do a dim a line, from that top point there where we started to the bottom point, we get 237.88, and I said we wanted 438.87. So it's out by a millimetre, which isn't bad on a pattern of this size. I'm going to go with that. A chord length is always a far more accurate way of um, measuring out a pattern and besides that I can also uh, just trim that off I can also do a dim angle in here from that point to that point there and it's showing it if I bring it down to here it's showing it 160 and I'll just do a precision on that to a couple of decimal places it's showing at 159.51, and I said to you it was supposed to be 160, uh, 160.99 degrees. So it's out by, you know, one degree on this pattern. Go with it. Don't stress about it. It's accurate enough. So the next thing is I need to number these lines around the outside here. Okay, so I've numbered around the outside of my pattern because the joint line is on the zero, uh, the shortest length. Uh, we will have uh, 0 and 0 on the two outside ends, so it goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, back down to 0 on the other end. So the very first line that we want to put in is this, uh, this length here. Uh, so the properties for it tells me that it is 54.78 millimetres long. You would set your compass to that and draw the line. So for me... 54.78 and I'm going to trim that out to where it's supposed to be so that's the very top line uh, on my cone sorry I'm just going to put all these in on projection lines as well now that I've had a th thought about it so that's the top of the top of the arc and I'm actually going to trim that out on that line. Will I trim that out? No, I'm going to break the line. So break the line. If 
do the same on the other side if so those two are actual projection lines as well to start our pattern so we've got our top curve what we need to do is now step from the very apex at the top down to all these lines down the outside so uh, this distance from the apex down to the first point is 135.25 so my next circle will be 135.25 so 135.25 that's my top point so I'm going to trim that back to that line as well uh, from there I want the next point so the next point will be from the apex now so uh, I've just done the top line the next line is this one here which is line number one it's 138.9 millimeters you will set your compass to that point 138.9 so another circle for me 138.9 from that mark so next one point number two from the apex distance from the apex so done we're down to this point here coming across from uh, line two which is actually this line going up here so to this point across to here is 149.95 so another circle here at 149.95 so line number three distance from, so that's all my lines so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna number them on the side here as well uh, down this outside edge here so that you can understand what I'm trying to do so I'm just gonna pause so down the very outside edge I have numbered my points the top line was zero next one down is obviously one two three four five and the very outer one is the longest line from the apex down to the very bottom so that's your outside length so then all I have to do is um, line up the ones that are coming around with the ones coming up vertically so line one coming around and line one vertically is a point line two coming around and line two going up as a point so what I'm going to do you will sketch through these points with a pencil uh, and I simply have to draw in as a spline so I go from here to this point to this point down to three down to four to five and to six back up to five back up to four scroll out scroll back in back up to three two one and on the end there so that's our joint line these lines here will be projection lines so we can put them in as projection lines this top line here is a projection line as well and in actual fact the very outside line is a projection line as well and if I if I break this line again that line there to the bottom is simply a projection line and our line down this outside edge will be a projection line as well apart from where the actual cone is so on there twice that line is projection so there we've done our pattern uh, so you can see it doesn't take up the full sheet but we have to put our projection lines in to get it on the sheet that's why I've had to do it at a scale of one to two to fit it one to three would have been too small that's how you would do your pattern so uh, this view here on the left hand side what I've drawn is a front elevation drawing like this you should have it labeled this actual line here is for the plan 
So you could write uh, above that, you could write that this is the plan view and just put a little arrow off to the side. And obviously in the center here, we have uh, our developed pattern. So what you need is you need a photo of how you've drawn it in this left hand window. You need to draw the pattern on an A4, sorry, an A3 piece of paper and take a photo of it. And then you have to make a model of it, either in paper or cardboard, and submit a photo of that. So you've got three things to do with that. So that's how you develop a, a truncated cone with an incline base. In this case, it was at 26 degrees. It's radial line pattern development at a scale of 1 to 2. I've given you a wee bit of extra information there on uh, large radius, chord length and arc angle. That's how I always check my patterns to ensure that they're correct. You could see that we were out by roughly 1 degrees, which slightly less than 1 degrees, but it was about 1.5 mil. Wasn't worth worrying about for something as uh, of the size that it was. You want to be super accurate, yeah, go for it and draw it out on a piece of metal and cut it out absolutely perfectly to what it should be. But there's, for the purposes of this drawing, there's nothing wrong with it because you're only sort of one and a half mil out, which is negligible on a pattern of that size. So that's how you're going to fit it onto an A3 sheet of paper. So there you go. That's the video for that one.